Well, hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Sabbath School. I was just looking at today's lesson, and there's so much to learn about Jesus and his love. I'm so glad you came to Sabbath School. You don't want to miss today's story. I hope you brought your Bible. We're going to have a wonderful day in Sabbath School. I'm glad I came to Sabbath School. I'm glad I came to Sabbath School. I'm glad I came to Sabbath School on this bright Sabbath morning. Cleaning the temple again. Our memory verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. God loves a cheerful giver. Today's message is, we reject Jesus if we choose to disobey his law. We accept Jesus when we let him help us obey. Jesus warns us in many ways not to reject him. Little Haley had a big problem. She was cheerful when she played with her toys or swinging at the park. But when mommy asked her to clean up her room or tidy up the shoe rack, she became grumpy and very unhappy. She obeyed slowly and complained. But fortunately, mommy knew how to help Haley learn to obey without complaining. At morning and evening worship, Mommy taught Haley how to pray and ask Jesus to help her obey cheerfully. And Jesus did help Haley obey cheerfully. But sadly, many people don't let Jesus help them obey. Our lesson today is about many people like that. But before we talk about it, let's do some singing first. I will wear a crown. had ridden into Jerusalem on a donkey while crowds of people shouted his praise. The next day, Jesus went into the temple and he saw that the courtyard was full of shouting people selling and buying animals. The people selling the animals were really stealing by charging too much money. And even the priests were cheating the people too. But what did Jesus do? Let's find out in Mark chapter 11, Verse 15 and 17, it says, And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. 
The guilty priests and merchants were more afraid this time than when Jesus cleaned the temple three years before. So they quickly rushed away with all their animals. After they left, the sick people came to the temple to find Jesus, and Jesus healed them all. The happy people, especially the children, sing loudly praises unto Jesus. When the priests finally came back to the temple, they saw the miracle that Jesus was doing. But they were very angry with him, and they hated him. Jesus felt sad that the leaders were choosing to reject him, so he warned them by telling this story. There was a man who told both of his sons to work in his vineyard. But did the first son obey? Let's find out in Matthew chapter 21, verse 28 and 29. And it says, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. The first son did obey. Did the second son obey? Let's find out. In verse 30, it says, And he came to the second son and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. The second son did not obey. So Jesus asked them, which of the two did the will of his father? The priest quickly replied, the first. Then suddenly they understood what Jesus was really talking about. The sinners and the tax collectors were like the first son. Those people disobeyed God, but many of them gladly accepted Jesus' help and repented. But the second son were like the leaders who said that they would obey God, but they never did. The priests understood Jesus' warning, but they still chose to reject Jesus and choose their own way. Then Jesus told the leaders another story. What was the story about? Let's find out in verse 33. It says, Hear another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it around and hedged it round about, and digged a wine press in it, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. When it was harvest time, the landowner sent his servants to get some grapes. But what did the vine dresser do to those servants? Let's find out in verse 35. It says, And the husband and the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. The landowner tried again. He sent more servants to his vineyard. And what happened to the second group of servants? Let's find out in the next verse. Verse 36 says, Again, he sent another servant more than the first. And they did unto them likewise. They did to the second group what they did to the first. So finally, the landowner sent his only son. And what did the vine dressers do to his son? Let's continue reading. In verse 38 and 39, it says, But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. What a sad story. So Jesus asked the leaders, when the owner of the vineyard come, what will he do to the vine dressers? And what did the leaders say? Let's find out in verse 41. It says, they say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto another husbandman, which shall render him the fruits of their seasons. Suddenly, the priests realized that Jesus was talking about them again. They had killed God's servants, the prophets, and now they were planning to kill Jesus, God's son. But instead of being thankful for Jesus' warning and choosing to do right, 
They kept planning to kill Jesus, God's son. Jesus warned the priests many times, but did they repent? Sadly, they did not. The leaders kept choosing to reject all of Jesus' warning. Soon it would be too late for them to repent. The next day, Jesus was in the temple again. And who was Jesus watching? Let's find out in Mark chapter 12, verse 41. It says, And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. The rich people had made a big show when they gave their money. Jesus watched them sadly. But then Jesus smiled. What had Jesus seen? Let's find out in verse 42. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. The widow looked around, hoping no one would see her small gift. She wanted to give more, but those two coins were all that she had. She wanted to give what she could to the God whom she loved. What did Jesus say about the widow's offering? Let's find out in verse 43 and 44. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. That widow's gift has helped many people not only give to Jesus their money, but also their hearts. What made the woman's gift so valuable? It was her love for God. Truly, God loves a cheerful giver. The priest selling animals in the temple, the disobedient son, and the unfaithful vine dresser all represent sinners who refuse to repent and accept Jesus. But the poor widow loved God and gave him all her heart and all her money. Boys and girls, these stories are for us. Jesus is warning us not to reject him. Let's choose to accept Jesus today and pray and ask him to help us to obey. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today's story. Thank you for all the many warnings that Jesus has given us not to reject him. Please help us to be like the widow who gave all that she had, especially her heart. Please help us to love and obey you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yay! All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, He made their glowing colors, He made their tiny wings. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. Things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Rain drops to rivers. God is pleased with little gifts cheerfully given to his work. The Bible says, This poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. Mark chapter 12, verse 43 and 44. How big is a raindrop? That's really a hard question to answer because raindrops can be many different sizes. 
Of course, some raindrops are very tiny, while the raindrops from thunderstorms can be much larger. Can you guess how many medium-sized raindrops it would take to fill one 8-ounce cup? Over 4,000! So one raindrop by itself is almost nothing, but 4,000 of them makes a whole cup of water you can drink. How many cups of water does it take to make a stream? Of course, there are little streams and big ones, but a medium-sized stream has about 3,000 cups of water flowing by every second. That makes just one cup of water seem like almost nothing. But 3,000 of them each second makes a whole stream. Then there are rivers, and rivers are much bigger than streams. Some rivers are bigger than others. But do you know how many of those medium-sized streams it takes to make a large river? More than 5,000! A big river like the one you see makes a small stream seem like almost nothing. But 5,000 of them make a big river. Now let's think about the tiny offering that the widow gave. It was just two little pieces of money, which were worth less than a penny. And it seemed like almost nothing when compared to the large offerings that the rich people were giving. But Jesus said that she had given more than all the others. How could that be? Because of her good example of giving generously, her story has inspired many thousands of people since then to give generously too. And just like the tiny raindrop or small stream, her offering has grown into a large river of offerings to God. Will you let her story encourage you too to be generous in your offerings to God? Will you give as much as you can to help God's work? Craft time! Yay! For our craft today, we're going to make an envelope. Just like the widow gave all that she had, the two little coins, to Jesus, we're going to make an envelope to keep our offerings for Jesus. And here are the materials that you need. You will need some crayons, a hole puncher, scissor, a scorer, bone folder, construction paper, our Bible verse for today, and our money bag, a hole puncher, a pop-up tape, glue, yarn, beads, and a ruler. We have quite a few materials today. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is color our money bag. And let's see. I am going to choose, oh, we'll use this crayon here, this color and this brown and what else and maybe gray so that we can color our money bag, okay?
money bag. We can put this off to the side. Here's our money bag. Next, we're going to go ahead and make our envelope. So, let me move these off to the side. Okay, we have our regular cardstock paper and you can choose any color cardstock paper you like. I happen to like craft, so we're going to use the craft card stock and we're gonna need our score and our ruler. What we're going to do is we're going to score three and a half inches on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up my my cardstock paper to my mat. We're going to score three and a half inches on one side and three and a half, three and a half inches on the other side. And then we will score one inch at the bottom and one inch at the top. Okay, here we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our bone folder and we're going to fold along the um, lines that we just, or the press that we just scored. <music> Now that we have folded our um, envelope, what we're going to do next, next is take our scissors and we are going to cut on the outside. We're going to cut the outside corner here at the bottom as well as the top. We want to go ahead and cut off this extra section there. there. So next, what, we're, what we want to do is um, take our corner puncher and we're going to punch the bottom as well as the top. All right, we have punched the corners. Now we're going to take our glue and we want to glue down our envelope, the open ends. We're gonna glue it down and then we'll glue the bottom like so, okay?
Okay, so we have glued down our envelope. And so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to take our money bag and then our Bible verse. We're going to put our tape on the back and tape it on uh, the front of our envelope. All right. <music> the front of our envelope with today's Bible verse. It says, God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7. Now the last thing we're going to do is we want to put a closure in our envelope because when we put our offering in our envelopes for Jesus, we don't want it to fall out, right? So we're going to take our hole puncher and hole punch. Make sure it's in the center. Okay. All right. I got my envelope hole punched and next we're going to take a rope to use for our closure okay i'm just going to take a good amount of length here cut this off and what you want to do is put the two ends together like so and we're going to take the other end and put it through the hole where we hole punched. And we're gonna grab the other end of the rope and feed it through the loop here, like this, like so. And we're gonna secure it by tying a knot like so okay there we go there's our rope for our closure um and next the last thing we want to do is put some beads at the end just one let's see i am going to what color do I want? Brown, black, or white? Mm. I think I'm going to go with the brown. <laughs> we'll keep the theme going. All right, so now you want to go ahead and insert it through the bead, your rope. And before I tie a knot, at the end, what I want to do is just check to see the, how long I want my rope to be because we're going to tie it like so. Okay, looks like this is a good length. Okay. Okay, there we go. So. I am going to tie a knot at the end here to secure my bead so that won't so it won't fall out. Like so. And you will close it by tying the bead around the rope like so and we have our envelope to put our offering for jesus and our bible verse reminds us again that god loves a cheerful giver 
I hope you enjoyed our craft today. Jesus wants us to always remember that everything we have comes from God. We should be humble and love him most of all. He wants us to share with others who need help. Boys and girls, that's all the time we have today. Our Sabbath school is over, and I hope you had so much fun learning about Jesus and his love. Thank you for coming, and remember, Jesus loves you, and I do too. Our Sabbath school is over, and we are going to church.